Hello, good morning and welcome to St. Peter's West Night and for morning prayer on Friday the 21st of September, making it also the feast day for Matthew, the Apostle and Evangelist. If you're wanting to find out more and follow along the optional extras for the day for Matthew, then we'll need to turn about two thirds of the way through and look up today's date, the 21st of September in the Sanctuary, the list of saints, days and festivals. And you'll find Matthew there and directions to material we'll use later. The main body of morning prayer you'll find in morning prayer on Friday, the daily variations during morning and evening prayer at the beginning of the Red Book after prayer during the day. Not seasonal time, where morning and evening are the same, but ordinary time where they change day by day. Morning prayer on Friday. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of triumph. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your heart as at Meribah on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> and so we turn to the back of the Red Book or scroll down in our apps for the Psalter. The appointed psalmody this morning, 49, and typically one from the, towards the end, oh no, it's not the very end, but towards the end of praise psalm 117. Psalm 49 and 117. <clears throat> Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all you that dwell in the world. You of low or high degree, both rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will unfold my riddle with the lyre. Why should I fear in evil days when the malice of my foes surrounds me? Such as trust in their goods and glory in the abundance of their riches. For no one can indeed ransom another nor pay to God the price of deliverance. To ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could pay for it. So that they might live forever and never see the grave. <clears throat> for we see the wise die also. With the foolish and ignorant they perish and leave their riches to others. Their tomb is their home forever, their dwelling through all generations. Though they call their lands after their own names, those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who boast in themselves, the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep they are destined to die, death is their shepherd, they go, straight, they go down straight to the pit. 
their beauty shall waste away, and the land of the dead shall be their dwelling. But God shall ransom my soul, from the grasp of death will he take me. Be not afraid if some grow rich, and the glory of their house increases, for they will carry nothing away when they die, nor will their glory follow after them. Though they count themselves happy while they live, and praise you for your success, they shall enter the company of their ancestors, who will never more see the light. Those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. We may use the prayer that follows in silence. So to 117, Alleluia. O praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. So if we turn up the entry in the festivals section of the Red Book for Matthew under today's date, 21st of September, <coughs> you'll find direction there to optional canticles, it's usually the first of the one or two that they offer. And if we turn that up, I'm afraid I don't have the page numbers on my app immediately in front of me, <coughs> but the refrain begins, the Lord. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall the Lord God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. You shall be called priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as ministers of our God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. <coughs> and as is often the case on saints' days, particularly significant feast days for the apostles, etc., we have very short readings. I think we're supposed to be filling our time with reflection or uh, other services. But uh, our first um, Bible reading is 1 Kings 19 from 15 to 21, but as we're looking that up, I shall read the potted biography from Celebrating the Saints. <coughs> Matthew appears in a list of 12 apostles of Jesus, and according to the gospel written under his name, was a tax collector, Mark and Luke called the tax collector Levi, and it has been assumed that they are one and the same person. This occupation was despised by his fellow Jews as a betrayal to the occupying Roman force. But Christ showed that judging by outward appearance was not what he was about. He ate with Matthew and with his friends, scandalising those around him. Matthew followed at his call, and this was enough for Jesus. For he had drawn someone back to God. He was forgiven, therefore he was acceptable, therefore he was received. <coughs> and say so to 1 Kings 19 from 15. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. You shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escaped from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. Whoever escaped from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. 
So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was ploughing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and I will follow you. Then Elijah turned, said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them, and using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. <coughs> So Elijah has been um, <coughs> having one of his wilderness experiences and <coughs> he returns having been told that he's going to basically restructure everything back home <coughs> and anoint various people as king. Um, he has obviously had a very public uh, presence before he went off to the wilderness. <coughs> and uh, one wonders what has been going on in the vacuum as when Moses went up onto the mountain and uh, one wonders how he received when he returned <coughs> it's extraordinary in these days of mass media communication when we all know what uh, POTUS is thinking because of his tweets <coughs> how awareness of individuals and their effect rippled through um, Israel and Judah. Anyway, he's told to return and to anoint these people, and uh, it could have had an immediate effect, or it could, like on other occasions, when I think Samuel was anointed, um, you know, Samuel anointed Saul, um, it took a little while for that to become sort of public knowledge, and sometimes when there were <coughs> insurrections, people declared themselves king. And if there was a critical mass who said, yes, you are king, then it held. But if it didn't, it went by the wayside. So he's told to go and anoint these three folk. And if they're not killed by each by one of them, they'll be killed by another. Except for 7,000 kept for Israel. You haven't uh, worshipped the god Baal. So it's not a collection of other gods at this time in Israel's history. It's just this one. It's uh, the god of Abraham. Lord of hosts, or Baal. And there are only 7,000 apparently by this reckoning. God's number, a goodly number, but a small number, relatively, who will be, will get through this great purge. So he sets out and on his way, the first person he meets is Elisha. <coughs> he was ploughing, um, and this is, I have no idea um, quite how much of this is if you like fact what he actually did it may well be that the throwing of the, co the cloak over is an ancient priestly practice for the passing on of the high priestly role for instance and it might have happened later but was taken to have um, because it happened later it was what people understood and so it was when this story was told that was how it was put just as when we see stained glass windows they are often drawn with the people the clothing at the time the, pick, the window was made rather than an attempt at historical accuracy. Equally with Jesus, he's not shown as a... Um, he would have been Syrian, he wouldn't have thought of himself as Israeli. Um, may have thought of himself as Jewish by religion, but he, he was a Galilean, he was from Nazareth. None of the identifying stuff calls him uh, Israeli, because I don't think uh, necessarily that word was used at the time. Even if you just look at your historical maps the back of the Bible, you'll see that, and I'm standing in front of a depiction of him looking very tall and white and blonde. So anyway, a bit of a digression. Cloak is thrown over him, went to the installation of the Dean at Salisbury Cathedral a week or so back, and that was exactly the same. He took off his old cloak and put on his new. He says, let me kiss my father and my mother and I'll follow you. I guess that's another way of saying putting his um, house in order, but uh, I guess he was young, and that tells us that. Um, we also have a... Um, connection in our minds perhaps how if we're familiar with the gospels of Jesus having similar conversations calling people to follow him and then saying well I must just go back and uh, look after my family and then the next one which also reminds us of that passage he says I've got to um, just go back and uh, he goes back and sorts out his uh, he makes an offering to God by um, destroying the means of his 
provision and survival and presumably that of his household. So he not only sort of says goodbye to them, but also finishes them off by leaving them in the lurch. They would have been his he would have been their insurance into old age. Uh, and the, the property that he destroys in honour to God, of God, is um, a significant sacrifice. And the people, we're told, eat the boiled flesh. And then he makes his way. We wait to see what happens next. But it's a very significant change of life, apparently very immediate. And it's going to be one of uh, violence by all accounts. Say to our second Bible reading, 2 Timothy from 3, or 2 Timothy 3 rather, from 14. Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 14. Just two or three verses, another short reading. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and from how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. <coughs> and so an exhortation from Paul to his protege Timothy to continue in the faith as he had it handed down to him by Paul. All scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, reproof, correction, training, righteousness. <coughs> I mentioned that yesterday at a conference actually on sexuality. I said that I was once at a reader's training session in a different diocese where it opened by, with somebody telling us that um, the Quran is the inspired word of God, unlike the scripture. I mean, obviously not read this word, this uh, reference that recently at the time, because it clearly says all scripture is inspired by God, meaning the scripture that we have before us, the Hebrew scripture, um, and the developing scripture, the writings of um, Paul and others as they've been accumulated, copied and circulated as letters, and Christians were gathering to read them in the development of um, morning and evening prayer, or at least Christian worship. It's one of those short passages that one could spend a fair amount of time diving into and teasing out sacred writings. I like the line, knowing from whom you learned it, continuing what you have learned, knowing from whom you learned it. It's a little bit like going to get a puppy from a puppy breed, as if you know them and if you've seen the way the parents are and see them with their parents, then you know that the, the puppy is going to be okay. <coughs> Where is the tradition? What do we know about our tradition? How far do we go back on uh, getting behind how and when, where the scripture was written? Do we understand revelation through it? How do we hold that against the other? The other opportunity is to, to learn and uh, arguments and cases from our traditions, from our experience, from the experience of the world. That great Anglican three-legged stool or three pillars of Anglicanism of revelation through scripture, tradition and reason. So we thank God for his scripture and for Matthew's part in the writing of the gospel. So let us return to morning prayer on Friday for the responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And so if you still have your finger on the page devoted to Matthew on the 21st of September in the Sanctuary with the list of, list of festivals and saints' days. You'll find direction there, if it's not written out on that page, to the refrain, which we will use to open and close the Benedictus, typically Hebrew style. The refrain is, you did, it begins with you did. If you 
are unable to find it, join in when we get to the main body of the Gospel Canticle, the Song of Zechariah, beginning, Blessed Be. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, the fruit that shall last. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, the fruit that shall last. And so let us pray. Sovereign Saviour, Spirit, one in three, three in one. We thank you for that which Matthew opened up for us and has presented to us even these 2,000 years on his depiction of that through which we receive our salvation, your incarnation, baptism, ministry, death, transfiguration, death, resurrection, ascension, and glorification. And we thank you as we do Friday by Friday for that sacrifice. For that exchange whereby you gave up that which was yours that we may receive that which was denied us through our own fault and we pray especially put the word ransomed as we were praying earlier we pray for those who require your ransom today as they follow you and find themselves incarcerated, persecuted, lacerated. We pray for organisations that seek to bring justice, provide wisdom and advocacy for such and their families. Pray that for all these for whom we pray, they will know your presence, your patience, and your provision. With Operation World, <coughs> we pray for the central zone in Nigeria, where missionary activity of Muslims is, has increased, and there are. Um, they are working amongst people of other, of ethnic religions and amongst the Christian community. <coughs> we pray that Christians will overcome historic hatreds and personal fears for the sake of courageous witnessing to Muslims in love. <coughs> we pray that these exchanges, these discourses will be mutually, ones of mutual appreciation and respect and that people will be free within their own communities and as far as the state is concerned to pursue the faith of their choice. I'm that they, oh, I was just about to start to pray for the government but the next item in this list is <coughs> about the challenges that the government face 
which are nearly as an urgent. <coughs> There's extremist agitation from certain Islamic groups in the north. <coughs> There's corruption, there are armed militias in the southeast, undisclosed but presumably Christian, widespread poverty, a disintegrating sense of identity. These are challenges enough for any established government, never mind, as they write, a fledgling democracy. We pray the right balance from caution and decisiveness in addressing such threats between prudence and ambition in economic development and combating poverty, we pray also for courage and wisdom in maintaining uh, a, a peace through police, military, justice, media in that land. A peace that is open and inclusive and not oppressed and controlled, but nevertheless one in which all people may be able to enjoy freedom of expression, association and religion. With Christian Action Research and Education, it is noted that today is the International Day of Peace, 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Pray for the millions of refugees caught up in and forced to flee from conflicts and other dangers affecting their home countries who long to return to a peaceful life where their basic human rights are respected and their families can thrive. We pray not only that we pray for that, that we believe that and we act for that and that we hold our government to account uh, pension providers to account, uh, businesses to account, that we encourage our media to present to us the truths behind the conflicts and the civil disruption that have caused these people to have to flee, where it is not unusual that it's to do with either climate change, abuse of resource, often by multinationals, by governments forced into impressive schemes for improving their own status in their own eyes. We have always tremendous to maintain an enemy to justify certain parts of our economy. Sadly, the development of this enormous refugee situation, globally unprecedented as I understand it, hasn't brought these ideas to the attention of the world's media or governments, it seems. But we thank you for those organisations that do lobby and that do provide, or media organisations do provide an alternative uh, interpretation or presentation of some of these situations. That there are at least contrasting narratives. From Green Christian, if I can find it, there we are. Greenpeace has awarded its annual Toxic Air Award to the car maker Volkswagen for these reasons. Nitrogen oxide emissions from diesel cars cause respiratory problems and VW produces more diesel cars than any other company. An MIT study shows that VW's excess emissions from the Dieselgate scandal, where it cheated on its emissions data, will lead to 1,200 premature deaths across Europe. And doctors say that emissions from diesel vehicles cause asthma in otherwise healthy children, stunt children's lung growth permanently and cause strokes, heart disease and diabetes in older people. But still, Volkswagen's chief executive officer says that diesel has a great future. Greenpeace has organised a petition which calls on the director to meet of the uh, VW UK to meet Greenpeace and set a diesel phase out date. one of many of the issues relating to fossil fuels, not only do they damage or remove stuff from the ground, they pollute and that not only has long-term consequences for our planet, 
but for individuals who are innocent recipients of the toxicity. As is often the case for a small amount of contemporary gain over and above what might be expected for a privileged few here and now. Pray Greenpeace success in that particular very specific piece of lobbying. We pray for businesses locally as growers, service providers and employers that they will do well and profit from their efforts. We thank you for the people that make up our church communities, those on our church membership lists, the church electoral roll. Today praying for half of those in Owen Roger and Hilary, Jill, Derek, Heather, Peter and Wendy, Robin, June, Richard, Christine, Wendy, David, Tessa, Eve, Pam, Martin and Anne, Valerie, Gerald, Susan, Timothy, Bob, Anne and John, Penny and Dave, Pam, Mike, Jenny and Warren. We pray your blessings of health, wealth, prosperity, salvation, healing and deliverance on these. Giving thanks for all they give of their time, talents, money to your church. We pray that you continue to build them and us up into fuller experience and understanding of faith as we pray, serve and study for ourselves and in fellowship with others as we worship, walk and witness. We pray that we will be known to be people who are full of the Spirit, that people see and know that we live lives that are extraordinary in their ordinariness, that heaven will be seen in the ordinary in us. Pray that we will be an encouragement to one another in that. We will pray for those amongst these named for whom life is difficult, that their faith and the knowledge of you and your presence directly and through people amongst whom they live will be an encouragement and a blessing to them in their circumstances. And beyond that, that you will provide, again, either directly or through the agency of neighbours, family, friends, volunteers and professionals with the expertise to help. We pray for those whose lives are going well, that they may be part of the answer for those who are struggling. And as they rather than calling on you for help, call on you with thanksgiving and praise, that they may demonstrate their gratefulness and gratitude by helping those around them. And that as they do that, not only will community be developed, but your kingdom will come in, through and for them, and in the places where we, they, serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Almighty God, whose blessed Son called Matthew the tax collector to be an apostle and evangelist, give us grace to forsake the selfish pursuit of gain and the possessive love of riches, that we may follow in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.